Kennedy's quote, basically saying we cannot allow legalized marijuana and also advocate for mental health. It's just the complete contra contradictions. Next slide. Okay, a couple of things. Marijuana use is associated with other substance. So uh, there's a, a correlation between marijuana and heroin. And then over here, 74% of the adolescents in Colorado substance abuse treatment programs had used someone else's medical marijuana. And they reported using diverted medical marijuana at least 50 times. So I got into it during a debate recently. And they said, oh, you know, it's, it, you know this is only going to be prescription, only if a doctor really evaluates this. That is not the case. 74% of the kids in substance abuse treatment programs in Colorado are using other people's medical marijuana, and not just once or twice, 50 times on average. This will be funneled to kids. They will have access to this. So, you know, you're being naive if you think otherwise. Next slide. All right, adverse effects of marijuana. We've covered this. Next slide. Okay, other unforeseen consequences. First one is, is that uh, some of the labs explode and they've had a number of these things exploding because people are trying to grow this and pump in certain types of gases in their apartments or houses, causing traumas. People are ending up in the burn units in various places in the states that have allowed this. Next slide. It's not legal under federal law, which means no bank will allow them to have a banking account, which means this is a cash only business. So you can imagine there are more uh, there are more marijuana dispensaries in the state of Colorado than there are pharmacies. You know that? More marijuana dispensaries in the state of Colorado than there are pharmacies, and each of these dispensaries is a cash only business, which means there's been an upsurge of armored vehicle purchases and an upsurge in armed security companies. Because and these folks will buy houses, they will put armored guards around the houses and turn it into basically a safe house where they have stacks of cash, and then they'll drive in the armored cars with these duffel bags filled with cash to go and pay their taxes or to go and purchase things. The other thing it's caused is it's caused an, up, an upsurge of the real estate prices because where do you put your money if you've got millions of dollars sitting around in cash? So they buy up all these, these real estate things and it's driven up the prices to the point that a lot of middle income and lower income folks can't afford housing in some of these towns anymore. It's a big problem. Next slide. And lastly, the FDA approval process. They're going completely around this. I spoke to a pro-marijuana crowd and I said, you know, you guys are in favor of marijuana, but you're setting a terrible precedent. So one of the things you always say is that the, the, all these big bad pharmaceutical companies are out there and you're trying to fight back against the pharmaceutical companies. Well, if I was an executive at a pharmaceutical company, I'd be you know, rubbing my hands in glee over this because I could then look at this and say, okay, it takes me $50 million to go through the FDA approval process for my new antibiotic. I'm just going to go around that process. I'm going to spend $10 million and market it directly to the people, and then I, I can have my drug and I can give it out you know, wherever. So what they're doing by circumventing the FDA approval process is they're setting up, they're setting up a precedent that could have terrible effects on our communities. Next slide. Now here's, here's the practical aspect of all this, okay? So I, I've been told by attorneys that I cannot tell you that they're marketing to children because that is intent, and I can't prove intent. And far be it from me to disparage the you know, noble reputations of these companies. I want you to look at the next few slides, and I want you to use your common sense, and I want you to ask yourself, are they marketing to children? Yes. Okay? I didn't say it. Yes. You use your own, your own intelligence, your common sense, okay? So hit, this is a, a picture from the DEA website. These were seized. A lot of these companies that were producing these products were actually sued by candy makers because the, back, the, part, the packaging was so similar. But look at this. Keef Cap. Rasta Reese's, OEO, Buddha Finger, Trichrome Crunch, Puffament Patty, Munchy Way, Twix. Does this packet, packaging look anything like something you would see at a convenience store that your kids would eat? I showed my kids this, and all three of my kids, nine, seven, and five, said that looks delicious. That looks great. Okay? I'm not telling you what the intent is. I'm just telling you what's out there. Next slide. Nutella, hazelnut spread with medical marijuana. I got challenged in a debate this week up in Rogers. Someone said, well, Greg, listen, all this stuff you're talking about, marketing children and, and you know, packaging and like candy and all that, that's not going to be available in Arkansas because it's medical only. It's not recreational. Medical marijuana. These products most certainly will be available. They'll be in homes. They'll be in homes of people that, you know, you probably your kids could go over there and spend the night party. Not, not knowing. You might not have it in your home. But if, if your kids have access to this, I mean, it's safe. It looks like something they would enjoy, you know, the Nutella stuff that the kids like. Hazelnut spread with medical marijuana. Okay, this will be available. Next slide. 
What about this? Your kids go over to a friend's house, they see this on the counter, would they eat this? My kids would eat every single one and not think twice about it. Each of these gummy bears has 10 milligrams of THC. Now, Marinol, which is the pharmaceutical product that we showed a slide of, has about 8 milligrams. So you eat one gummy bear, you got more than a prescription dose THC. And my kids would eat the whole pack, 250 milligrams. There's been an upsurge of kids ending up in the emergency departments having ingested things like this. The other side said in a debate recently, well, it's not a big deal. They just lie down and go to sleep. That is not true. Okay, this is, this is a big problem. Now, do you, do you die from an overdose of marijuana? Well, not necessarily. But you, there are problems that are caused. And kids that eat this on a consistent basis have major problems, that we, as we've talked about, with cognitive development and all that. So this is not a safe product. So 10 milligrams per gummy bear. Okay, let's go to the next one.